It's been more than 70 years since the first successful organ transplant, a kidney. The chances of further operations of this kind being conducted. People who want to donate their organs can have their names put on a computer by using, for example, a new type of driving license application form. And thanks to the donor register, hearts, lungs and livers are now among the 100,000 organs replaced every year. When you lose someone and they've given that gift, that huge gift, you are immensely proud of them. But even now, it remains a difficult wait for patients. It took just over a year for me to get my transplant and I deteriorated a lot during that time and I was constantly in and out of hospital, getting weaker and weaker. Um, so yes, it was a terrible and terrifying time. Here in Gothenburg, one team are trying to solve this and they're using technology that's a bit like a 3D printer. Their aim, well, it's to grow organs from cells here in this lab. No donor necessary. Today, we are going to look at printing skin. The skin is composed of different layers. Okay. And every layer has different types of cells in combination. It is the human body's largest organ, but even a small skin model requires millions of cells. They're mixed into different bio-inks for the machine to choose between. You really design a code. What tells the printer what to print, when, and in which structure. It's a lot more visible than I expected with the naked eye. A hollow blood vessel structure has been layered inside this one, and a syringe-like print head has a different purpose. So you can actually print cells or hair follicles to really replicate the skin. At this stage, it kind of looks like a bit of toothpaste, but actually it's seriously complicated cells in here. While 3D printed skin could be applied in surgical grafts, drug and cosmetic testing, the cells have to mature first. This is where we culture the samples we've printed. They are kept in incubators for several weeks, and this tray is about a week old. The top part, which is mimicking the top of our skin, is on top. A mix of proteins and nutrient molecules is fed in and the waste is removed, all while being closely monitored. The beauty with this microscope is you can actually wash your sample through an iPad, so it's no longer looking through those small eye things. Green dots for living cells, red for dead. So there's not that many dead cells here no, that you can see. Which is a very good sign. Close analysis of the end results is needed to fine tune. Selink has been printing cancer tumours so that patients could receive personalised treatments without enduring drug trials themselves. They've also made liver models for drug screening campaigns and are helping beauty brands become animal cruelty free thanks to testing on lab-grown skin. In this Gothenburg hospital, researchers plan to put bioprinted cartilage in patients with muscle issues in just a few years. First patient is of course the um, sports injuries because they will probably heal better or we, at least we think so, but, but also for, for elderly patients or patients that suffer from osteoarthritis. We get very nice cartilage tissue that have healing capacity, so we, we are very optimistic. Further studies are needed to prove the methods are safe, but it could save time and money. You can actually print what the damage looked like before. We can actually print it directly into the knee, probably, in the future. And you can mass produce it. I mean, you can start with a printer and then go home and make thousands of copies. And more complex procedures are coming down the line. So what do you feel is the ultimate aim? Many people die waiting in the line for organ transplantation. So what we're hoping is that this technology in the future will actually be able to provide these organs. How far off are we? I think 15, 20 years is when we might see it in clinic. Simpler organs can be seen very, very soon. But if we're talking a full organ, internal organ, that will take some time. One of my oldest friends is alive thanks to a donor liver. To not have that year over year wait, to know that they would be potentially growing an organ for me, you know, if that's all it took, 
I would have been in a stronger place to have the operation in the first place. It stops a lot of the worry, I would imagine, because you know it's there. And like this waiting game that you don't know when it's your turn. Would you feel differently about having an organ that, you know, didn't mean that someone had to die? You're waiting for somebody to die and you're waiting for that person to be in the right blood group, the right size. You know, I couldn't have a six foot eight massively obese gentleman because it wouldn't have fitted in my abdomen. So if you were able to eradicate all of that and then almost grow, home grow your own to the exact perfect fit, yeah, I think it would be life-changing for thousands of people. There's a way to go yet, but the first steps from skin cells to mending muscles are promising. I won't be the only one hoping lab-grown organs could cut the queue to life-saving operations.